everyone welcome to the sixth episode of the phd scholar series of humans in education project our guest for today is tris molwa from morocco tris is pursuing a double doctorate degree in material science from the piradia jules one university in france and the national institute for scientific research in canada He is awarded with the scholarship from Natural Sciences and Engineering Research Council of Canada. So now, so now let's listen about Tris' journey from him. Uh, bonjour, Tris. Uh, welcome bonjour. to this session, and thank you so much for accepting my invitation and your for your valuable time. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure for me. uh so let's start now first uh, we would like to know a bit more about you okay so my name is uh, dries moleur i'm 27 years old uh, currently i'm doing a phd thesis in 2d materials for auto electronic application in which i'm working between um, two universities the university of quebec at institut national de la recherche scientifique in varennes in canada and also at Picardy Jules Verne University uh, in France. So I'm Moroccan. I started my studies in Morocco. I got my uh, bachelor degrees in 2016 at my first university, which is called Moulay Ismail University in Meknas, in my city, a uh, bachelor in material physics. Then I started a bachelor in material physics. Then I started a master degree in uh, renewable energies and storage technologies. So the choice of this master, because in our country in Morocco, we have a strategy to achieve a, 50, a 52% of our need on electricity using only uh, renewable energies. That's why in Morocco we have uh, today the most biggest solar station. So plenty of masters have been created to, to achieve this uh, objective. I was studying in Rabat at uh, Mohammed V University. Then I did an internship of Erasmus Plus at uh, the Public University of Navarre, in which I was uh, working on passive radiative cooling uh, at the Department of uh, Telecommunication Engineering. Once I finished this master, I started another master in France at Bordeaux, at Ecole uh, Nationale Supérieure des Arts et Métiers in which uh, I was studying material engineering and process for sustainable development. Then I did a uh, visit in research for my uh, internship at uh, Birmingham University of School of Physics and Astronomy, in which I was working on metamaterials. Yeah. I've seen that you were working on metamaterials also. Yes. But uh, for me, I was working on electromagnetic metamaterials and I can use it for uh, energetic application. So, I was studying a lot of simulation, and my objective was to find a PhD thesis in nanofabrication. You know, to be able to fabricate what I was simulating in my master degrees, etc. So now I'm working between France and Canada. In France, we are working on the chemical approach for nanofabrication. I'm using chemical vapor deposition. In Canada, I'm working on the physical approach, I'm working on pulsed laser deposition to fabricate 2D materials beyond graphene for optoelectronic application. So I love sports, I'm, I'm doing sports. I love uh, films also, music. I love to travel, to know um, other culture, to have many friends, so I'm a very open-minded person. What is your research field uh, or what is your research topic of the PhD? Can you tell a bit more? Okay, so we are uh, using 2D materials beyond graphene for optoelectronic applications. What is the meaning of optoelectronic application is that we will use light in order to generate electrons. And these electrons can be useful for several applications, including photovoltaics, hydrogen fabrication, photocatalysis, etc., etc. So Graphene, you know, graphene was the first popular 2D materials and graphene was like a revolution because this is we a very, very thin layer, which is one atom thick layer. It's, it's very, very thin, but with some exceptional properties. However, the graphene is a metal, you know, we is not a semiconductor. It will not be able to generate electricity or electrons. That's why the 
the focus of scientific community was shifted to other 2D materials beyond graphene that can be used for other applications, as I said, in photovoltaics or hydrogen or photocatalysis, et cetera, et cetera. So my material for me is molybdenum disulfide, which is a semiconductor. So to fabricate this material, we can use several fabrication approaches. For me in France, I'm using chemical vapor deposition to fabricate the material. But in Canada, I'm using pulsed laser deposition using a laser to fabricate this, this material. And the, the objective of my studies is that to understand the two fabrication process, try to fabricate the material with these two process and compare it which one will be uh, very efficient in order to fabricate the next generation of photo detectors, of next generation of solar cells, et cetera, et cetera. So this is the topic I'm working on now. Okay, uh, nice. And what's the potential impact of this research work uh, in the practical applications? In the practical application, this can be very, very useful for next generation of photo detectors and solar cells. Now for solar cells, we are using only silicon, which okay. is very, very popular, or solar cells based on 10 films. But if we imagine that we can fabricate some solar cells with very, very thin materials, it's like one atom thick materials, this will help us to do the miniaturization of solar cells. We can imagine a very, very thin solar cells, and this will be revolutionary for many applications, like for your cell phone, for uh, solar cells, for uh, biomedical applications. So this is the objective of nanotechnology. That's why nanotechnology is very, very efficient, that we can fabricate many uh, devices, but with very, very thin layers. So this is why it can be useful. Okay. Can you also tell us a bit more about your research group? I mean, it's about its activity and research work and other research groups which are working in the same research field? Yeah, of course. So I'm working, as I said, in France, in Canada. In France, in our laboratory, we are working on other applications beyond the 2D materials. We are working on magnetic uh, materials, for, for instance. Mm -hmm. We are uh, working on other applications. It's not only for the detector, but for storage applications. So many groups are working on storage of uh, electrical uh, energy or electromagnetic uh, energy. In Canada, uh, there is other groups who work on photocatalysis and photo degradation. So they use light in order to uh, reduce the pollution of water or uh, to use it for hydrogen fabrication, etc. So the groups are working in this, but both of them are working in experimentation. So they don't use simulation, for, for instance. The simulation we use is simulation of DFT, uh, density functional theory, in which we simulate uh, the atoms, not the device. For, 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 for instance. How did you land up in this research area? Or oh, I mean, what was your motivation for, to do this research work? For me, the first motivation is that I will study the nanofabrication. This is what I was looking for. And okay. especially 2D materials are like, um, the topic is quite interesting. This is the future. And this will help me wisely to explore what I was studying during my master's degrees. And this helped me wisely to uh, make it easy for me to optimize, it, for example, the growth condition, etc. Because simulation was very, very useful for me because I can do simulations, so I can expect what tightness I will use, if I will use nanoparticles, which diameter I'm, I'm gonna use. So this was very, very useful for me. But now I can fabricate and, can, and I can compare. I can know the secrets. I can know. I can expect, you know, the difference I will have between the experimental measurements and, and simulation. So this is what I was looking for. And this okay. makes me so happy, to be honest. Okay. And why, why did you choose this kind of double doctorate program between France and Canada? Yeah, I know this can be a little bit stressful, you know, to work between two laboratories, but at the end of story, you will, you're will gonna have two diplomas. So this is quite interesting for, for me as a student. And of course, for the background, 
I will be able to fabricate my materials or my devices using two kinds of fabrication approaches. So I can see my device according to a purely chemical angle and a purely physical angle. So this was for me very, very interesting because I can explore the potential of my two supervisors, my supervisor in France, in which I'm learning a lot of things about the chemical side of fabrication, and also my supervisor in Canada, who helped me to know more about the physical side of fabrication. So that's why I I was like very, very happy to integrate this PhD position. Okay. So what is the structure of this kind of double doctorate program? Structure is like, I'm going to study between both mm -hmm. okay so i started like a six months in france then a six months in canada a six months in france so okay. it, it's, it's like that but at the end i have to secure some credit each okay. phd position there is it is necessary to achieve some credit i have to study some something and then i have to present my work in the two countries so i will present in canada and also i will present in uh, uh, in France. The topic is the same, but I it is necessary to have some publication in both sides, the physical side and the chemical side. Okay. Your PhD is funded or you are getting some specific scholarship? Yeah, I have a scholarship from France. Okay. A scholarship of one year half. Okay. And I have also two scholarships from Canada. Okay. They a scholarship for to pay my tuition fees. And also another scholarship uh, for me for my living expenses. Okay. So, but each each side they will pay me uh, one year half. Okay. So what is, what are the name of these scholarships? For a scholarship in France is um, Haute France is uh, it's a region. Uh, okay. region, uh, region uh, I'm, I'm working at Amiens, the north of France. So scholarship is a scholarship of Haute de France. Okay. okay. And another scholarship is Enersec, scholarship of Canada. So uh, my supervisor who gave me this from his find, if you like. You are actually from Morocco and you have some experience of living in French, but I think uh, somehow the uh, Moroccan culture is also influenced by French cul culture as it was a colony part. But uh, for Canada, how was your experience uh, uh, living as an international student? So Canada is a very, very wonderful country. In uh, Canada is a country built by immigration. So in Canada, you will have the opportunity to meet many people from all the world. For example, in my group in Canada, I have a friend came from India mm -hmm. and another friend come from, from France. Okay. So you can meet all people from all the region, from all uh, religion. So it's uh, shock culture is not something that you're going to find in, in Canada. So I, I recommend people to to apply for Canada because it is a wonderful country. Okay. Which are another scholarships uh, which students apply for to study PhD in Canada? What I can recommend students is to contact directly the supervisor because depending okay. on his finding, he will show you if your profile is interesting for him, he will find a solution. So don't apply for a, a specific scholarship, but you can contact directly the supervisor in which you are interested to work with him. And he will tell you, okay, you're going to apply for this process or for this another process, or he, he, he will pay you. Because okay. in Canada, we have something, it's the capitalism. It's not like France, etc. So the supervisor can can secure your scholarship. So this, okay. this is very interesting. Okay. And what what was the first cultural difference you found when you first time moved to Canada? Is the French accent of Quebec is not the same that uh, in France. Okay. So there is many words, it's like between English and French, in which I was not able to understand what they what they are saying. 
but it took time, it took some weeks, etc., to understand. They translate for me. I know the context, but somehow they um, there is a, a little a mixture. I don't know. Uh, it's too difficult for me to explain. But I was like, why you are telling me that? Ah, okay, no. Here in Quebec, we say this word in this way, not as like French. So this was a little bit difficult. But after you know, everything was easy. Okay. What is your advice for the P students who are applying for the international PhD program? Okay. So my advice for them is, first of all, you have to ask yourself why you would like to do a PhD position. Because many students are doing a PhD and they don't even know what why a PhD thesis. They think that if you have a PhD, thesis, you're going to be rich. This yeah. is this is not true. This is not true. Even with uh, I don't know how many PhD this is you will have, you will not be rich because you have you know do science if you like science, if you love science, if you feel happy in doing science. And I ask them to like write your CV, you know, a CV that's asking yourself after three years, I will be this person. If you are happy from the CV, like just imagine, imagine it. If you are happy, okay, this is you. you. You have to have a plan. You have to have a strategy in order to make it reality. What, what you have in this, like, say, effective CV, you will make it a reality. So in this case, you, you're you going to be happy. Of course, you have to read a lot. If you don't read some other articles, it will be too difficult. And, of course, make a research about supervisor. If it's supervisor, um, the communication is also very, very important between supervisor and the, the PhD student. Sometimes it's too easy for you to find a scholarship, but supervisor is so busy and uh, the topic, you know, you, you're going to lose your time. So I recommend them to, first of all, understand what is the meaning of PhD position. You have to be able to read. If you have a problem in English, for example, it will be too difficult for you to, to understand scientific articles, etc. Because for international students, for instance, came in from India, and yes, the second language is, is English. For you, this is not a serious problem in English. But in my country, for example, people came with a French background, etc. It's a little bit difficult. And I found this when I studied in Spain, I was not even able to understand the scientific publication because I was studying in French. This was for me like a, a tough thing. It, it was too difficult for me. It takes time. So you have to understand why you would like to do PhD position, what you have to uh, increase your level, uh, which is your uh, weakness point in which you have to work on in order to be able to do a PhD position and to secure a PhD, a, a very successful PhD position. Uh, that's it. So, and... Thank you so much, Riz, for this insightful conversation and especially for your valuable time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much.